Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I want to talk to you guys about the family. The family is a very, very important institution, if you will, within the Latter-day Saint movement. I believe that the family is important because the family is the first thing that evil attacks because family is the core thing that ensures that we know that we're not alone. And so because of that, I want to testify to you, brothers and sisters, that the war on family is real. And it's, it's a war that we're waging against evil right now. And the worst part is that evil, that Satan and his armies have discovered the best way to destroy the family is by flipping the script and stating this small sliver over here is what a family is. And if you're not a part of that, you're not a real family. And so therefore you are the war on family. Well, that doesn't make any sense. One of the questions I had as a kid was, I remember uh, once a year they would always have these people come in from the LDS social services. I don't know what it's called now, or I'm not even sure it still exists, but they would come in once a year and they would talk about this idea of, I remember one time I was talking about this 12 year old girl who had a baby and you know, they didn't, don't get an abortion and give it up for adoption and all this. And I'm like, well, what if she's 26 and she wants to keep it? Nope. Nope. Got to give it up because a real family is a mom and a dad. And therefore that child should be taken away and given to someone else. That is, is destroying a family. Now, to be clear, I don't think that it's wrong for a mother to give her child up for adoption if that's what she chooses to do. What is wrong is going in and destroying a family by forcing her to do it. There are people, there are children who go to a, a neighbor, a trusted neighbor's house to do their homework, to get food. And they see that trusted neighbor as family because maybe they live in an abusive home. Maybe their parents, one or two, are working their fingers to the bone and just don't have enough money for food and they don't feel safe being home alone because their parents are always gone. Is that a family? I wanna to testify to you that it is. A family is love. A family is the smallest unit of the gospel because the gospel of Jesus Christ because the family is a group of people that gets together, whether it's because of blood, because of marriage, or because of a sense of community, people who aren't related, they just you know, know each other and found a community, a family within one another. We have to stop trying to define family for other people because when we do, we're on the wrong side of the war against the family. From the very beginning of the fellowship, the big question everyone kept asking, I've talked about it before, is what about polygamy? And what about same-sex marriage? Those, they, to this day, I still have people, they want to come in and, and say how we do things. I want to read you the revelation I received on this topic. This is Doctrines of Saints 17D18. What does it matter provided the children of Zion are raised in love and righteousness? If a child is afraid for whatever reason to be in their home and they have a trusted neighbor who loves them and cares for them and, and, and is basically an adopted parent for that child, what does it matter? Because the child is being raised in love and righteousness. If a child has two parents of the same gender, what does it matter? as long as the children of Zion are raised in love and righteousness. Now, if there's abuse, that's not love and righteousness. Whether that's abuse against them, against one of their siblings, against the, the one or the other spouses, that's not love and righteousness. That's obviously a problem. But I think we focus too much on destroying healthy homes because 
it's not something that we were interested in. I I don't like lima beans. In fact, I, I hate lima beans. I love corn. Love corn. I had a roommate. His favorite thing to do was to take lima beans and mix them with corn. Man, I hated it. I'm like, you are ruining this corn. You're making it so nobody can eat it but you. This is disgusting. But you know what? I didn't try to pass any laws to stop him from eating it. I didn't get upset with him when he ate it. I just didn't eat it myself. And in the end, he didn't waste any food because he loved it. So whatever he made, he ate it. Isn't that very similar to marriage? I'm a cis heterosexual man. I'm very happily married to my wife. That doesn't mean if somebody else is hetero, I'm sorry, homosexual, that I should be against it because it's not for me. I should be happy for them because they found happiness. They found love. They found a family. And there are a lot of children going through the foster care system. There are a lot of children that need parents. If a man and a woman biologically can't have children, they can adopt, but not all will. If same-sex couples can legally adopt, which they should be allowed to, that's more children that can be raised in love and righteousness. So who are we to stop it? The first thing evil does is attack the family. Because the family is the epicenter of love here upon the earth. It's our core. It's our safe place. And what does the adversary want to do? He wants to destroy that. That firm foundation of love. He wants to destroy that safe place and make us feel lonely and alone. This revelation was received because someone was really struggling with the topic of polygamy. And the answer was very simple. There, there were several answers in here. I want to quickly mention that one of them is that monogamous or not, consenting adults, marry when you're 18 or older. And if you want to be polygamous or you know have some sort of group marriage, then make sure that you're over 21 because you want to make sure that you're old enough and mature enough to kind of know what you're getting into. That's, that's the crux of it. You can read it for yourself. But when it comes to really, when it comes down to really for me to... The core of this revelation, uh, it's 17 D and E, both received in the same day at different times. It really is verse 18 here. What does it matter provided the children of Zion are raised in love and righteousness? Because if one of the spouses is abusive, if someone's doing something really, really bad, they're not being raised in love and righteousness. But who we choose to marry isn't something that's really bad. I've told you guys before, about that member of the Brighamite church. We were in the car. We saw a couple, a black man and a white woman. And that person just went off about how there's no way they were Mormons. And then when they went in the building, oh, well, they know better. They're definitely going to hell because they know they should be mixing races. Well, that was ludicrous then in the, what was it, early 80s? It might have been the mid 80s. It's incredibly ludicrous now. It's incredibly backwards, and it's it's offensive to say. When are we going to get to the point to where we feel the same way when we see homosexual couples? When do we get to the point to where we say the same thing when we see polygamous couples? And you know what? We, as a nation, and really globally, took a group of people, the LGBTQ community, and threw them out into literally the streets very similar to what happened to the Brighamites when they went out west they were suddenly alone in Utah and they thought they could get away with doing whatever they wanted and so hey guess what polygamy they redefined marriage because they weren't trapped in the social norms now I'm not going to argue if what they did was right or wrong I just want to point out that as Mormons regardless of what branch of our religion you belong to, we should be able to understand that the LGBTQ community 
did the same thing. They didn't go over to Mexico and eventually, you know, that became a U.S. territory. They were literally in our streets here. And because they couldn't marry and because there were laws against loving people the way that the Lord designed them to love, they redefined love just like the Brighamites did. And now we have a much larger idea of what family can look like. And as long as it's a family based on love and unity and supporting one another, then we will be raising the children of Zion in love and righteousness. So my message for you today, my Sabbath message for you is this. We can win the war against the family. We can win our, this war that the adversary has set up, the evil one has set up attacking all of us. To do it, we have to allow people to find love in the way that the Lord created them to do so, provided everyone is a consenting adult, so that all parents have an opportunity to raise the children in love and righteousness. And if we can focus on that and focus on doing that in our own families and in our own lives, we will be blessed and the adversary will be kept at bay. There will be protections allotted to us for fighting the good fight to protect the family. However, each family defines that term for themselves. That's my Sabbath message, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.